Hi, my name is Caitlin McCarthy, and this is the economic development par portion of the uh, milestone. Hi, my name is Caitlin McCarthy, and this is the session five milestone, and the country I chose to do was China. This is the economic snapshot slash analysis. Uh, in 2019, China's real GDP was 6.14%. Uh, China's real GDP per capita is 16,111. Their inflation rate is 2.8%, which is good compared to other countries, and their current rate has also gone down to 1.19% in 2021. One of these main reasons for this decrease in inflation was the drop in pork prices. Uh, pigs have become more replenished and making it uh, easier to access, so that's why the pork prices have continued to drop. Their unemployment rate is 3.64 percent. It's currently one of the. It's not the highest, but it's one of the main causes for unemployment. Has currently been COVID, which is also going around the entire world, so not just China. And it's so low because of their full employment policy. China believes that every person should be working, and so they have placed this policy in order to keep people working and in jobs. The economic challenges they're currently facing is creating higher job opportunities. Um, most people are wanting jobs that are paying more uh, in a sense that China was known or still is known for their unfair trade practices, which is lower wages for their workers. Therefore, this is cre the higher job wage job opportunities is creating more issues throughout the economy, um, causing people to move to different places. Uh, Another challenge has been their speculative investment of real estate, and this has become an issue because of the growth of China. Their real estate has become one of the main reasons for this growth, but also the population has caused a larger slower in the economy with this um, investment due to more people needing housing and more people um, finding jobs in areas that have less housing. Their government, fiscal, and monetary policy. The government type is a Communist Party-led state or the Communist Party. It's also known as the People's Republic of China. Uh, their current leader has become one of the most uh, controlling or most influential within China than since Mao Zedong. Uh, their government currently has all power and authority. It even has power over the economy and sections of businesses that could be state um, led. They're, it's considered a socialist market economy causing the government to have more control over it rather than market or state or um, self enterprises. The central bank is known as the People's Bank of China. Uh, in China they don't have full policies including the monetary policy. Their bank um, rather runs on a market or open market operations and a reserve requirement ratio. Open market is more um, open within the banking rather than within the government central. Uh, they have full control over the China yuan, which is the currency currently in China. The impact of current issues on the economy. China is facing a labor surplus to a labor scarce society. Therefore, this shows a shift from more elderly than younger aged working because children are required to go to school in China, which is causing them to find more workers that are elderly in a sense that they can only fill the jobs. However, their quality of life and aging is also causing an issue, as well as a migrant um, tightening, which shows that there's not as many people coming over to work in China, which is causing a um, shortage in workers. It's also facing an income inequality, which is also happening in the United States. Um, their main goal has been lately has been to decrease the amount of in poverty, bringing more to a middle class rather than a low class. But it has also increased a larger um, gap between a rich and poor. Um, part of this is because of large growth and large growth of population and urbanization in the country. More people are moving from uh, for moving from rural to urban countryside. Um, part of this could help through the distribution of wealth, um, just 
wages in general as well as different job positions. The trade exports and imports, their export trading partners are the United States, Hong Kong, Japan, Vietnam, and South Korea. And in this, they have a value of $2.49 billion, which was in 2019. And they export mostly broadcast equipment, computers, and integrated circuits, which is also one of their main imports. Their import trading partners is South Korea, Japan, Australia, Germany, United States, and Taiwan. And they have $2.14 trillion in 2018. Most of their imports are crude petroleum, integrated circuits, iron, and natural gas. And in these numbers, it shows that there is a trade surplus or a positive trade balance in which there is more imports than there are exports. By seeing this trade surplus and positive balance, it shows that China relies heavily on their imports. Um, it is said that their imports are more sophisticated than exports, causing them to have a higher usage or be more useful in general. Um, their fair trade is not, they are working or starting to place more fair trade practices. However, China has been very well known for their untrade pra trading practices, which is cheap later that causes cheaper products in the sense that the United States is why, that's why most um, products says made in China because of the cheap labor as well as the cheaper products. The economic development part and slash poverty, um, the causes of poverty is an urbanization and an income inequality, as mentioned earlier. Uh, urbanization brings more people into a different area rather than rural, looking for higher wage opportunities and different job opportunities. Uh, the income inequality is different wages for different uh, groups of people. Uh, their income for a separate job may be higher than another, however, it is causing a large gap between rich and poor. The lack of economic development, there's an over-reliance on fixed investment. Going back to the real estate, um, a lot of their investments are real estate or growth operations, and so it's causing a very reliable economy on those type of things. They have a reliance on exports rather than consumer demand, meaning that they are focusing more on um, things that are going out of the country rather than focusing on their own people in the country. And that's partly because their government is r running the majority of their companies instead of focusing on uh, like self-ran companies. Part of this um, is being helped by implementing policies. Uh, they, China has focused on increasing a role in their market economy, which is causing a higher business in the consumer demand, as uh, mentioned before. And also an increase in innovation, which causes their um, trading to increase and be more reliable in the future. Some policies that might be recommended is upholding or like bettering their fair, fair trade policies. Part of this is because it will bring also, since they're facing a labor um, scarce society, it would bring in more opportunities for people to work at higher wages, which is better than um, working at a lower wage for a trade. Uh, which brings me into the next policy, which is higher wage policies. And it provides higher wages to everyone, not just a single group or a single job opportunity. Uh, also, the labor market policies could be um, helpful to China because of the different types of jobs and the different people that are in these type of jobs. It becomes more opportunity for more people. The skills and training for economic development. Uh, communication. It's a Communication has always been and always will be a main factor in business, and China could use this to um, see different opportunities for economic development and communicate those throughout the country. It also can communicate how to change and maybe a way to change the things that are should be improved for economic development. Um, problem solve, which solving issues that may be hindering development. This could be like um, unfair trade practices that could be... Um, Stopping the growth of the economy because nobody wants to work at a low wage. 
Um, setting goals and objectives. To increase the economic development, you have to have a type of stepping stone and know where you want to get with the economy. Therefore, there's a plan outlined to make it that happen. And knowledge and business uh, of economic development. Reduce income inequality. It would allow the least advantage to at least have a shot at um, becoming uh, something other than in poverty or lower class. And economic policies in certain areas, it will allow different um, places to better their business. Uh, negotiation, ways to economically help the least advantage. There may be ways that uh, the least advantage need or when they need it, and so just negotiating different ways to help would be an advantage. And also an analysis for ways to help least advantaged and what ways helped and what may, may have not helped could be vital to China. A conclusion slash analysis. It shows that uh, China is currently ranked 26 in GDP across the world, which shows that they are emerging, emerging slash developing economy. Um, they have a government that is a communist party and it shows full authority in the country. They face current challenges similar to the United States like income inequality. However, urbanization is one of their main reasons for poverty. Um, one of their main goals in the last few years has been to bring more out of poverty and place them in the middle class rather than a lower class. Uh, their trading has been vital to their economy and GDP in the country. Uh, their main export partners and import partners are um, engaging in their country and bringing stuff to our country and their countries in order to for our economy to grow as well. And poverty and development, um, they are currently working to get out of poverty and develop more. That's one of the main reasons real estate has become or real estate investment has become one of the most influential or growth opportunities in China. And here are the references. Thank you.